contact between the two, between Dragon Grace and the International Space Station at 5.31 a.m. Central Time. And now that the hooks have connected, all 12 and umbilicals, and umbilicals deployed, providing power and communications. Now the team inside the International Space Station, namely Nicole Ayers, is gonna start beginning the hatch opening procedures. And now that we're docked, she will secure some hardware and then move right into those operations. And first, we'll open the large hatch at the Node 2 Zenith or the space facing port side of the Harmony module. And that's what you see similar to where that NASA logo is. That's the Harmony module that pressurized mating adapter is jettisoning up into and connecting to the Dragon Grace spacecraft. And then from there, she'll traverse into that pressurized mating adapter and will begin pressurizing the vestibule, which is that small space between the hatches on Dragon and the space station. And we have talked about this has been exposed to vacuum prior to docking. And we'll need to fill that space with air to make sure that pressure is equal with the atmospheric pressures on Dragon and the International Space Station. Also putting away some hardware in the process, including the docking across. And airs will use a small valve on the station's hatch to slowly introduce that air into the vestibule. And flight controllers here in Houston will continue to monitor the pressure and temperature readings inside, then verify that everything is A-OK -okay and leak-free before we get ready to open up the hatches. From that capture moment, which again was 5.31 a.m. Central, 6.31 a.m. Eastern over the North Atlantic, it takes roughly about two hours to get everything pressurized and checked out before we open up the hatches and welcome in Axiom Mission 4 to the International Space Station. SpaceX Dragon on the big loop. Comp check uh, on the cabin mic. Peggy, I have you loud and clear on the cabin mic on the big loop. Dragon SpaceX on Dragon Aground. That call on the cabin mic actually came over Dragon Aground. Thanks for the catch. Uh, we reconfigured. This is Mission Control Houston as we continue to follow along the progress of the contact capture and beginning of hatch opening procedures as Axiom Mission 4 has arrived to the International Space Station with contact at 5.31 a.m. Central Time. The soft capture and ring have been retracted and stowed away. The 12 hooks around the 
knows the bulkhead there of the Dragon SpaceX connected to the pressurized mating adapter have latched on to create the hard mate. The umbilicals have been extended to allow for Dragon to run on power per and communication lines provided by the International Space Station. And now looking at approximately 8.35 a.m. Central Time for welcome remarks. And shortly after, the Axiom Mission 4 team make their way through the hatchway and into the International Space Station. The docking procedures between the soft capture ring, the hooks, and umbilicals have been completed. On the big loop, node two overhead hatches open. Houston copies. And a good call there down from NASA astronaut Nicole Ayers saying that she has opened up the hatch for the node two zenith. Way, the space facing side of the Harmony module to give her access to the pressurized mating adapter. And there she will cruise in to begin work on the hatch opening procedures and pressurizing. Station and vestibule. Dragon Houston on the big loop. We are troubleshooting the big loop audio comm issues from earlier, and the action we're about to take will take down big loop comm between ISS and the Axiom crew for about five minutes. We may require additional comm checks after. Copies. Communications there on the big loop between the teams here in Houston and up to the International Space Station as they troubleshoot some communications and the big loop that you have been hearing that have connected everyone here inside of Mission Control Houston and the International Space Station Flight Control Room, those aboard the space station and inside the SpaceX Dragon Grace spacecraft and the teams in Hawthorne, California, those four parties, that's the big loop. They will troubleshoot those communications for about five minutes and then recheck. But you heard just prior to that that NASA astronauts Anne McLean and Nicole Ayers have begun the hatch opening procedures in which the large hatch at the Node 2 at Zenith, that's the space facing side of the Harmony module, has been opened and that will allow for them to begin the hatch opening procedures and pressurize the vestibule, which is what, in addition to the comms checks, we will monitor as airs will use a small valve on the station's hatch to slowly introduce air into the vestibule. That's the gap between the Dragon spacecraft and the International Space Station that has been exposed to vacuum. And from there, they will match the pressure, the atmosphere inside both station and Dragon. And this procedure for a hatch opening usually takes about two hours or so for, to perform leak checks and make sure every connection and everything Houston, is safe station and sealed. on the big loop. In step 2.4, the time is 10.56. The A-pass equalization valve is back closed. Houston copies of a good config. Expect at least 15 minutes before we continue. And that communication between the International Space Station and the International Space Station Flight Control Room, and you heard the word APAS hatch, that is the hatch, again, that they will be operating and looking to open up from the space station side. But in doing so, they will need to pressurize, as we've been talking about, the vestibule, and then allow for the atmospheres to match between the Dragon Grace spacecraft and Axiom Mission 4 crew, the vestibule itself, and the International Space Station all equal throughout to allow for the parties to pass through for the hatch opening and eventual welcome remarks. The contact for Axiom Mission 4 to the International Space Station about a half an hour ago at 5.31 a.m. Central, 6.31 a.m. Eastern. And as they continue to configure the hatch opening procedure, 
for Anna McLean and Nicole Air, those communications throughout in anticipation of Axiom Mission 4 and Commander Peggy Whitson making her return to the International Space Station, her fifth flight, second as a member of Axiom Space and the commander of Axiom at Mission 4, and her previous three as a NASA astronaut servicing key missions to the International Space Station, and a big part of the coming up in November, 25 years of continuous operations and humans on board the orbiting laboratory. And there she will welcome also first time flyers and pilot Shubhansha Shukla of ISRO, Swabo Uznainski Vishnievsky of ESA, and Tibor Kapu of Hunor for Shukla Vishnievsky, or Vishnievsky and Kapu representing India, Poland, and Hungary. This will be those nations' first time visiting the orbiting laboratory. And with that, from Axiom Mission 1 through Axiom Mission 4, the International Space Station will have welcomed 14 different private astronaut crew members representing 11 different nations, showing how private astronaut missions truly expand access to the International Space Station for more nations, people, and opportunities. And on your screen, you see the clock counting upwards at the bottom, the T plus, that is one day, four hours, 28 minutes, and now. SpaceX Dragon. Dragon SpaceX on the big loop. Dragon SpaceX com check on Dragon Aground. SpaceX Dragon uh, from the cabin mic on Dragon to Ground. Peggy, I'm with you on Dragon to Ground. Did you call for me or did I misunderstand? I was returning your call. Uh, okay, stand by for inventory. Copy, standing by. Com checks and communications there between the teams in Hawthorne, California and SpaceX and the SpaceX Dragon and Grace spacecraft. As we heard earlier that they were troubleshooting some communications and looking to bring back on the big loop that connects the teams on the ground in SpaceX and NASA, as well as the teams in the International Space Station and the SpaceX Dragon spacecraft you, itself. Thanks. SpaceX Dragon for inventory reporting on Dragon to Ground. And I'm with you on Dragon to Ground. We are about to enter a LOS period for about four minutes, so we'll need to stand by. Communications between uh, SpaceX and the crew aboard 
the SpaceX Dragon and Gray spacecraft, saying they are upcoming on a period of LOS or loss of signal that's anticipated as the International Space Station and the spacecraft orbiting around the Earth and transfer of satellite signals. Right now, they are making their way over the uh, southern Indian Ocean and about to head into a period of orbital nighttime as we will get back views as soon as we have them. And again, the spacecraft carrying Axiom Emission 4 and the four private astronauts contact with the International Space Station at 5.31 a.m. Central Time and expected to continue with hatch opening procedures as they have already dro driven the hooks, connected the umbilicals for power and communications. And that's astronauts Nicole Ayers and Anne McLean working on those hatch opening procedures as we speak. And that will allow the crew to make its way from Dragon into the International Space Station, going from a crew of seven aboard the orbiting laboratory to a crew of 11. And that'll be followed by welcome remarks at approximately 8.35 a.m. Central Time, 9.35 a.m. Eastern Time. Certainly an exciting moment for all of us here in Mission Control, but we want to check back in with our team over in Hawthorne as Axiom Mission 4 has arrived at the International Space Station. For as many times as we have had the privilege of supporting crews headed to and from the International Space Station, I'm certain that it is an incomparable experience, something that unless you're on board, you can't possibly understand what it really feels like. Um, Paul, and I'm confident that you and I cannot do it justice even attempting to tell everyone joining us today about it. So instead, we have invited Axiom Space's own commander, Michael Lopez Alegria, to share from his previous experiences. LA, MLA, or Commander, you've got a few designations, right? <laughs> for those who may not know. How are you doing, Paul? Good to see you, Ronnie. Hey, it's good to see you as well, sir. Thank you for joining us this morning. Yeah, good to be with you. So for those who may not know, uh, I've got to uh, share a few stats here just to make sure people understand who we have joining us today uh, on the show. <clears throat> you've flown to space six times, two of those to Dragon, uh, uh, on Dragon for Axiom Space. You've got a running total of, say, 296 days, 16 hours and 15 minutes, give or take or so, in space. You've conducted 10 EVAs over the course of your career. And when you're not in space, you're helping get others.